is it allowed for a student of knowledge to take knowledge from the books of fiqh uh, directly or from the books of hadith directly? He said, we've already answered with regard to the books of hadith that it's not allowed for him to take that without referring to the explanations, without referring to the rulings the scholars extracted from them, and so on, the istimbat. He said, this is a khata, this is a mistake. And the sheikh, he mentioned how, when is it that a person's, uh, that the, a person's approach to fiqh is valid? He said that, they, he, he mentioned two types of books. He said that there are books of fiqh that are mutun, but they don't have any evidences in them. So we're talking about a book of fiqh here that doesn't have evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah in them. And the Sheikh said, we're not opposed to those books. We don't have any objection to those books. But we're going to delay those books to the second level, to the next, you know, the next stage, level two. The, the second kind of book that the Sheikh mentioned is the books which contain fiqh, they're fiqh books, and they contain texts from the Quran and the Sunnah. They contain some explanation. They contain some, where the areas of disagreement and consensus are. They contain extracting the rulings from those texts. And they contain tarjih. The scholar says which one is the right answer. So the Sheikh said, these are the books that we're going to tell you you need to give attention to this at your first level, at level one. Those are the books that contain the Quran and the Sunnah and they contain explanations and rulings and they mention disagreements and agreements and they, the Sheikh at the end makes tarjih. He tells you what is correct or what he believes to be the correct opinion. And the Sheikh he said, explaining that disagreements between, for example, the Hanafiya they, they had a different opinion to the Shafi'iyya, the Shafi'iyya, different opinion to the Malikiyya, the Malikiyya, different opinion to the Hanabila, and all the different variations of that. The reason that this difference happened is because people's intellects are of different degrees and different levels, and the amount someone understands something differs from another person. And the Sheikh said, if it wasn't for this, there would never have been any disagreement in the first place. And the Sheikh said, even among the Sahaba, and he said, it's, not, it's impossible that everyone agrees upon everything. So he recommended for you, for example, if you were to read from the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shaybah, or you were to read from the same of the Musannaf Abdul Razak, or you were to read likewise this one for, of Sa'id bin Mansur, or you were to read the book of Al-Imam Al-Bayhaqi, and so on, you would see that after mentioning their ahadith and their texts, they have chapters on the different opinions of the Sahaba on a particular issue. And that's why the Sheikh said, I advise the student of fiqh that they read a book which is called Raf'ul Malam. And this book is by Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala. And I don't know whether this book has been, I suspect it has been translated into English, I'm not sure. But basically it talks about how there isn't blame, there's no loan, there's no blame upon the different scholars who differed on fiqh uh, issues. And the Sheikh said that the Sheikh, Sheikh al-Islam in this book, he mentions approximately 10 reasons why the scholars differed on these issues. And the Sheikh said, if we go into all 10 of them, this is going to take a very long time. However, just to give examples, one scholar, a hadith reached him. And the other scholar, that's, that hadith never reached that scholar. He didn't know about that hadith. One scholar, a hadith reached him that was nasikh. That hadith abrogates what came before it. But the other scholar, he had the hadith that was mansukh. It was abrogated. So they both had a hadith, but one of them had a later hadith which overrules and abrogates the hadith that came before it. One of them took a linguistic approach to a particular text and took, a, took out a benefit based on the language of the Arabs. And the other one did it a different, took a different approach to a particular text and so on, the Sheikh said. So it's very important for the person who wants to gather knowledge that that person gathers between 
the furu and the usul, they gather between the subsidiary things, the things which are not comprehensive principles, but individual issues and individual details, as well as comprehensive principles. They bring all of those things together, the fundamentals as well as the subsidiary issues.